Hey everybody, this is Dark Garza and we're back on another video. So I'm going to show really quickly how you set up the reactors and kind of what to look for when you're building a reactor design. Now keep in mind the things I say are likely to change in future versions and be modified and tweaked as we go. But for the moment this is going to be the main structure of how things work. So for starting on the most basic concept when you were building a reactor for atomic science is to understand that this is not like any other uh, reactor mods. There is not a set layout that you have to build your reactor in. You can pretty much build it in however style, shape, form, whatever you want to do, build out of any type of material so long as you meet some basic conditions. And the basic conditions are A, you need some water. You don't have the water around it, you're not going to get vaporization, you're not going to get steam, you're not going to be able to turn the turbines. You are going to need to be able to place the turbines above a water source that is being heated, and generally you want to build your reactor with some kind of casing. It's not required, you literally could stick this to the bottom of the ocean and put some turbines above it and it probably would work just fine. Uh, we'll just show this by actually building a reactor here, so let me grab some parts here. Uh, we do support uh, all three power systems, so we'll support Forge Energy, which is usually used by most mods. This means it'll cover thermal expansion, mechanism, actual additions. I think it'll even work with any of the Tesla mods, all that stuff, so it works just fine. It'll do IC2, IC2 has its own power system, so you'll need to be able to support it, so it does that. And it supports Buildcraft, although Buildcraft power is a bit flaky due to it still being worked on at the moment. So if you do end up using it and want to power stuff, you will have to keep in mind that you're going to want to put one connection per turbine because trying to do more than one connection will cause the power from Buildcraft pipes to fluctuate and flow back in on itself. But let's go ahead and build a reactor over here. So you can build them anywhere. Uh, they are somewhat biome um, influenced, at least that's the plan right now. The code is not fully there, but it will be there eventually. So when you do pick the biome to build your reactor, keep in mind that this will change the default temperature of the box around here. Uh, I can kind of show this off by grabbing the heat probe. If you actually want to see how the heat works, we can actually show the kind of behavior here. So if you right click, you'll see that there is a temperature value by default. It'll measure right down at the bottom here how much energy is currently stored in that box. This is excess energy not based on the actual environment. Then it will tell you the environmental energy, the energy that's being produced because of the environment. These are stored separately just because it would be a pain to kind of make sure that the chunk always has that data in there. So we actually calculate off the biome and any other environmental conditions going around based off planet and everything else. It will tell you the temperature, it will do this in Kelvin. Uh, you basically minus 270 or something like that off of it to get the Celsius value. Then you can do the math to get the Fahrenheit. Uh, future, we might actually add a way to convert this for those who um, are not intuitive with Kelvin. Kelvin is used just because it's a scientific unit and it does not have a negative number, which makes it very easy to do all the mathematics that we need to do. You will then see the next value behind it is the heat to melt the block. Most blocks do not have a melting value at the moment. In the future, this will be implemented once the thermal system is fully flushed out. So the first value is how much heat you will currently have with both the first two numbers added, divide over top of how much heat is needed to melt the block. Uh, when we're actually looking at reactors, so let me go back here to kind of show them and talk about this a little bit more, is that if you click here, if you shift right click, by the way, you will get the face of the block. So I will get the block on the face of this block I'm clicking. And if you right click, you will get the block being clicked. And you can see how it kind of talks about the, the uh, different heat values here. So shift right click, I'll get the water block. And it'll tell me, hey, you've got 5.6 gigajoules out of the 3.82 gigajoules needed to start causing that block to hit the next stage of matter. This does have a matter-based system, although the system is very generic. So technically, you can have multiple states of matter. So you can go from ice to water to steam to plasma if you wanted to. Or you can even have a system where you go from solid rock to slightly melted rock to even more melted rock if you actually wanted to. But uh, the last number on here is the vaporization. This is how much millibuckets of fluid is being produced. Because of the way I've currently got the mod design, we do not actually destroy the block when it starts to vaporize for water. This is mainly just a performance uh, thing. In the future, there will be uh, ways to turn this on and allow the water block to be vaporized off and you would have to replace it. But we're not going to implement that in the current version simply because of performance reasons. But that's kind of how you check the heat data and everything else. So when you build the reactor, pick a decent spot where you want to do it. I recommend building some kind of casing. The casing does matter to both the thermal and radiation based mechanics. If you see in the top left, there is a radiation based system. The top uh, number is how much radiation your character has absorbed. The bottom is how much is being produced in the exact spot you're standing. That spot is calculated not only where your feet are touching, it's calculated based off the feet, the hip level, the shoulder, and then the head level. That way you get a very even spread, so that way if you're sitting behind a, a block wall like here, if you have something in front of you, you'll still get hit by radiation because radiation will be hitting you in the head and causing different values. This is going to be tweaked in future versions to behave a little bit differently, but we'll cover that specifically in its own video. 
So when building the reactor, pick a spot, build a casing. Uh, it varies on the blocks. Stone blocks are going to have a rather generic heat uh, transfer level between them. So it's not the most recommended block to build out of. Bricks have a very good insulating ability, but we're just going to build with polished granite. I will be adding stats here eventually to show the amount of radiation blockage and everything else. That's what you're kind of seeing down there is the early version of me working on that. But you build your reactor casing. It doesn't really matter how big it is. Uh, the bigger it is, the more heat you're going to get transferred around. So you kind of, if you want to have a fish in a reactor, you are going to want to take into consideration that you want to block as much heat from escaping the reactor as possible. Though in future versions, you're also going to keep in mind you don't want too much heat to be in there because the reactor will eventually have a way to melt down. This is probably going to be way far off in the future and will not be implemented anytime soon. You are going to need, you are going to need water. Um, and my monitor just uh, glitched and restarted on me. Yeah, you are going to need water, but more fluids will be supported in the future to have different vaporization levels. So we'll end up actually doing that. You can build up walls around here. You can do whatever you kind of want with this. And my power is fluctuating, so let's see if we get this video actually done in time. I'll have to probably make another one here in the future just because this one is probably going to have some issues with it. Because uh, definitely power fluctuation is not good for recordings. But you build the reactor casing. You can cover it. It's recommended to make the wall a couple blocks thick, and I'll show this kind of off of why this is a thing in a second. Uh, so we'll make one of these walls a one block thick, and we'll make this wall two blocks thick, just so I can kind of explain the mechanics of the radiation. I will go into a lot more detail in other videos to kind of express how this works. But once you get this built off, you can just put uh, turbines above it. Uh, you want to make sure the turbines are above water, or they're not really going to do anything, because once they hit a block that's not water, they're going to pretty much stop. Future versions may allow certain blocks to be placed below it, such as cabling, pipes, signs, doors, stuff like that, and with a slight reduction in flow. But you put that above there, and then all you need to do is stick a rod in here. You can stack the reactors multiple blocks tall to uh, allow you to create more uh, effective designs. The model will update and allow you to put more in here. If you put a rod in the top, it will migrate down to the bottom automatically over a set period of time. This allows you to easily feed rods into the system, so you can have a hopper at the top to drop rods in there or a pipe system to your discussion and feed rods in there the weakest rod will go to the bottom and will eject out of the bottom you can also implement a controller here which will allow redstone control so if you actually get down here and put this down right this spot and put this here we actually can at least some way attempt to get stuff down underneath here so we can turn the reactor on and off this will eventually have an accompanying block to allow you to more easily control it from distance because of course at the bottom you're going to want to be able to put in that hopper to pull rods out of the system. If you do something like that, that should turn the reactor off and allow you to decay it. It does take sometimes a little bit of time for the heat and radiation to fully decay off, but it does end up actually decaying off properly after a certain amount of time. If you see issues with that, just feel free to report that if it's not decaying properly. We got the radiation here. So if you see, if we get close to here, the closer you are, depending on where you're standing around it, you will get different radiation levels. So this is where you want to build the casing out. So the casing is not just there for thermal reasons, but it will actually block radiation. So if I'm standing here, I'm going to get about 60 rims of radiation per second. But if I'm standing here, I'm only going to get 36. It's the same exact distance. If we come over here, the distance is going to be a little weaker, but it's a relatively the same if you understand. So you see about eight here. If I'm standing one block away from over here, I get about 13-ish. Distance does affect the radiation, and if you go over here, about the same distance, 38. So that does matter how much casing you have in between it. This is a ray trace based system, so you actually could very easily just build a wall like this that has air gaps right here, and it will work all the same, assuming that the map does get a chance to update. It does not update right away in the current version, so once you place blocks like this, you are going to want to cycle your reactor again in order to have the values update. Future versions, this will be done automatically. But that's kind of how to set the reactor. Very straightforward. You can connect your uh, power wires up here and get them funneled just like we're doing over here and supply power. It does produce a lot of power. Almost every option. This is also configurable. So if you have a mod pack and you want to change how things work, you feel free to actually do so. But that's been about it and I will see you guys later.